health properties. Today, we will learn about the aquatic structure of the animals that gave rise to those properties, which is also the reason why we're not going to do this like this. I am Pedro Jeanette from Tele Island for a TV. We'll be learning with you today. To start the second quarter, for grade 9 students in science, we will be learning about the electronic structure of matter. Grade 11 STEM students are also studying about this. So sit back and have fun learning! Before we start, let us recall some concepts you have heard in grade 8 about chemistry. Using the definition given, identify the term on the left. Pictures will also be shown on the right as additional people. First, what do you call the tabular array of the chemical elements organized by atomic number? This is also an essential tool in learning about the elements. Correct! This is the periodic table. First, what do you call the tabular array of the chemical elements organized? Next, what do you call the number of proton, which is also the number of electrons, in a neutral atom? This is also unique in each element. You got it! The answer is atomic number. It is a negatively charged, fast-moving particle with an extremely small mass that is found in all forms of matter and moves through the empty space surrounding an atom's nucleus. Alright, the answer is electron. Now, what do you call the horizontal row of elements in the modern periodic table? Great! That is the period. When you look at the periodic table, it has seven periods. Now, what do you call the horizontal row of elements in the modern? Lastly, what is the vertical column of elements in the periodic table arranged in order of increasing atomic number. Good job! That's the group. It is also called family. Very good everyone! Don't forget those concepts because we will be utilizing them in our lesson for today. You have discussed before how the atomic model evolved from Dalton's billiard ball model to the quantum mechanical model of Erwin Schrödinger. Due to scientific advancements, multiple observations of the atoms, and mathematical calculations, locating the exact amount of the electron is impossible. But they can be found in this region of space where it is likely to be found, surrounding a nucleus known as the orbital. To understand the concepts of the electronic structure, we should discuss the quantum mechanical model. This is presented by Schrodinger and was based on mathematical equations and gives electrons as a cloud of negative charge. The density map represents the probability of finding an electron at a position around the nucleus. The higher the density, of points near the nucleus shows that the electron is more likely to be found close to the nucleus. To learn about the quantum mechanical model, we will be discussing the following. Principal energy level, energy sublevel, orbital in each sublevel, and the spin of the electron. The principal energy level. It indicates the relative size and energy of atomic orbitals. The smaller the electron's orbit, 
the lower the atom's energy state or energy level. Conversely, the larger the electron's orbit, the higher the atom's energy state or energy level. Let's take a look at the periodic table. How many periods do you see? We assign numbers 1 to 7 to the energy level of the element, which is also evident to the period of the element to where it is located. In each energy level are sublevels. These are the shapes of the probability distribution which is defined by the orbital shapes of S, P, D, and F. As you increase the energy level, the sublevels also increase just like in this amphitheater. You get more regions of seats as you go farther from the center of the stage. Let's organize the different sublevels. The first energy sublevel is S, meaning sharp. Its shape is spherical. Next is the P sublevel. P means principal. It has the shape of a dumbbell. Next is the D sublevel. D means diffused. And when you look at the images, it looks like a clover. Lastly, the F sublevel. F means fundamental. And these sublevels have complex shapes. Orbital. The region in space where electrons are found. The number of orbitals depend on the shape of each sublevel, and each orbital carries two electrons. Let's fill up this graphic organizer of the orbital of each sublevel. The first sublevel is S. Since there is only one shape or region for S, therefore it has one orbital only, and each orbital has a maximum of two electrons. For P sublevel, it has three orbitals. And for each orbital with two electrons, then the maximum number of electrons for P is six. There are five orbitals for D sublevel. Therefore, D sublevel can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. Lastly, for F sublevel, it has 7 orbitals and it can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. In each orbital can be found 2 electrons. These electrons are like spinning on its axis. However, these 2 electrons should have an opposite spin in each of the orbitals. To summarize everything, here's the table for the corresponding sublevels, number of orbitals, and maximum number of electrons per each energy level. Let us now apply the concept of the energy levels, sublevels, and orbitals in writing the electron configuration. Electron configuration is the arrangement of electrons in the orbital of an atom. This is how we write the electron configuration. It contains the principal energy level, the sub-level, in this case is S, and the number of electrons per sub-level. But in writing the electron configuration, we must follow the three rules. First is the Aufbau principle. Aufbau is a German word which means to build up or construction. So it means that when we write the electron configuration, we must start at the lowest energy level, which is 1, together with its corresponding sublevel, S. After it is filled up, then we go to the next sublevel, which is 2S, then 2P, and so on. The mnemonic of the new the mnemonic of the orbital filling is on the right to serve your guide 
in writing the configuration. The second rule is the Pauli exclusion principle. There should be only a maximum of two electrons per orbital and they must have opposite spins. We use arrows in writing the orbital diagram of elements. Lastly is the Hunt's rule. When the sublevel has multiple orbitals like P, D, and F, we fill each orbital with single electrons with same spin first. Then, pair it up with the opposite spin starting from the first orbital that the electrons enter. Let's now try this. Your your periodic table and read the element to identify its atomic number. Let's start. First, oxygen. What is its atomic number? The next element, sodium. What is also its atomic number? Now you know the atomic number, let's write the electronic configuration of these elements. Let's take a look at the periodic table. How many periods do you see? We assign numbers 1 to 7 to the energy level of the element, which is also evident. The period of the element to where it is located. Let's also look at the periodic table. Do you know that it is also divided into the different blocks? This is the S block. The P block, the D block, and lastly, the F block. Now that we know their atomic numbers, we will now be writing their electron configuration. We start with the lowest energy level and its sublevel, so we write 1s2. Take note that S sublevel can only hold two electrons, so we will be distributing the remaining electrons in the succeeding sublevels. Next is 2s2. Completely filled up again. Now, we have distributed the four electrons of oxygen. We will be distributing the remaining four. The next sublevel to be filled up is 2p. And since four remaining electrons will be distributed, then we will write 2p4. This is now the complete configuration of oxygen with 8 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Let's also try for sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons to be distributed. We start again with 1s2 to fill up the sublevel. Next is 2s2. Filled up already. Next is 2p6. Look at the distributed electrons. We now have 10 electrons distributed. We only have 1 electron left. So the last sublevel is 3s1. There you go. That is how you write the electron configuration. For additional exercises, Try to write the electron configuration of these elements. You can pause the video, then play it to check your answers. Time to check your answers! Did you got it all correct? Alright! Great work! Now you know how to write the electron configuration of elements. I hope you learned something new today. I am Teacher Jeanette, your teacher for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Tele Arrow Program Teaching Channels for more learning materials.